Hello, I thought it was time to make another video. It is lockdown video number two. I have had my end of year results recently as well. So I've been making one of those every year. So it felt like the right time to do another one. Um, and I've had in my mind um, the idea of doing uh, my sort of story so far based on uh, a presentation that I give at our undergraduate um, prospective student UCAS open day things uh, throughout the year. So uh, I will do that for those of you who don't really know what my background is um, and a roundup of what happened this year at the end. Um, for those of you who are interested, mostly friends and family who already know this story, but hey, anyway. Okay, so I have now finished my third year at university, fourth year, including foundation year, and I have one year left um, to complete the bachelor's. During our undergraduate open days, I have a presentation, only a short one, called How to Become a Physicist, basically according to me, because there is no right way to become a physicist. Um, but I will, I will talk you through that. Um, I will put up some of the slides as well as I go along. So there's a bunch of photos that it starts with. The first one being Willardton Hall, Willardton Park, which is nothing to do with physics really, but everything's to do with Nottingham. And it's one of my favorite places and I like the photo. So I put it at the beginning. Um, and then I cut to um, a chunk of photographs from my life, um, right the way from when I was little to where we are now. I could go through them all sort of here but I'll go through the slides in order and then if there's anything that I want to come back to that I don't really um, elaborate on more in my presentation then I will do that now. So <laughs> um, I've just remembered what my presentation actually is. Sort of four things that I feel like I've learned throughout my degree so far including the foundation year and I start on a positive note and that is learn to fail. <laughs> um, I feel like that's been a really really big thing for me as a as a physics student, um, failing in, in maths and the sciences really sucks and it's really hard and it's not something I'd ever really come across before because I didn't really push myself in maths or science. Um, it, if any of you have seen all of my videos, you will know that I found the year after foundation year, the first year of undergraduate physics, really, really tough, really tough. Um, not just academically, but mentally. Uh, <laughs> I almost hate going back to it, but I learned a lot from it. So in my January exams, so we have, we sometimes have January exams. We usually have summer exams at the end of the academic year. But in my January exams, I got a 17.5% in, in my maths exam and 20% in another module. And it hit me really hard, even though those exams themselves were only worth 10% of the module total. Um, I'd got through foundation year with, with good results. And I got, I started the first year proper of physics. And I was like, this is like a warning sign. This is telling me you're not good enough to be here. What the hell are you doing? And it threw me com um, completely, it broke my confidence. Um, but it was really important. Um, and it gave me a chance to sort of slow down, reevaluate, and try and turn it into an opportunity. Uh, so I just had to dig really, really deep and push through that. And I think it also just came back to, so I've got my GCSE grades up there as well, that weren't particularly great. And I got an E in maths at GCSE when I was at school in South Africa. And I kind of, I didn't really revise for the exam, but also it was just like 15 years old, I think I was when I did my GCSEs. And that stuck with me as you're clearly not good at maths. That is your, that is your adult assessment. Go out into the world and don't do maths. So not only did I have that at the back of my mind, but also this being sort of like a once in a lifetime opportunity for me to sort of career change. Um, yeah, so in a nutshell, it hit me really hard. But um, so dug really deep that year and just kind of slowly figured out what I needed to do to continue and to pass. And my biggest motivator is the physics itself and enjoying it. So I had to try and concentrate on, on that. Um, so yeah, it's important to fail. It's really, really, really important to fail. And the earlier you do it, the better. Don't intentionally fail because that's silly. Um, but getting to grips with failure is really important. And it's something that you will do 
a lot in your career, whether you become a scientist or otherwise. I feel like I've gone into undergraduate mode now and I'm talking to a bunch of 17 year olds sat in front of me, sorry. Um, <laughs> so yeah, fail and then, and then succeed. Um, this slide is in here because my lecturers sort of, will push me to include it, Megan and Matt, thank you sort of saying yes it is important to recognize when you haven't done so well but you also need to pat yourself on the back when you have done well so i include these slides uh, regarding my successes so my second year went so much better everything sort of just not fell into place but the treadmill was was manageable and i was enjoying all my subjects and i was getting my coursework in early and everything was just nice i loved it uh, and i came out finishing that year with the first and I was really 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 chuffed um, and I also have a picture of me graduating nine years ago to the day I think I'm recording this video which is scary so when I graduate next year it'll be 10 years anyway so I graduated nine years ago with a degree in Russian and Slavonic studies and that is a success too I already have a degree it's weird but um, you know that wasn't a piece of cake and it was something I really loved and it's shaped me today um, get uncomfortable. <laughs> this is, this is my number one sort of like why I love the University of Nottingham and the physics department there. Get uncomfortable in a place where you feel comfortable. Um, what I have realised for me is when I feel really uncomfortable, it's because I'm learning again and it's such a horrible feeling. It's, ugh. Um, but it's really, really important for personal growth and it's really, really important for learning. And when you are challenging yourself in a subject that is as challenging as physics, then it's a good thing. So recognize it um, and find the sweet spot. Um, so, you know, you don't push yourself so that you're completely stretched and you're burnt out and etc. but you're pushing yourself enough that it's a challenge that you can manage. Um, and yeah, do it in a place where you feel comfortable. I've put a supportive environment. So like Nottingham have been this. Yeah, everyone should come to Nottingham. This is, I don't, I get paid on the open days, but I'm not getting paid now. <laughs> um, when I, when I was thinking about where I wanted to study physics, I knew it was going to be a huge challenge and I wanted to be in a place that I felt supported, but not just supported, but the accepted, I guess and the physics department at Nottingham do that wonderfully and there's a person I know who went to the University of Lancaster, Alice, who also makes videos and I think she's had quite a similar experience. The, the department in Lancaster seem similar in their supportiveness and for me that's exactly what I needed. I needed someone or somewhere that, that wasn't going to make me feel like if I didn't get A's and I wasn't a genius that I wasn't um, meant to be there. Uh, so yeah, the physics department have been hugely, hugely supportive. So they make me feel comfortable when I'm feeling totally uncomfortable. Patience. Be patient is um, the fourth lesson. Um, don't expect results overnight or even in a year. It's funny, sometimes you read these things and you're like, remember, remember you told yourself that, Hannah? Um, that was kind of first year in a nutshell. So my grades were disappointing to me and those first year of those January exams were particularly disappointing but like I said I dug deep and just sort of got on with the work and you can't sometimes you can't turn it around in the space of a year and that's okay it still doesn't you know it doesn't mean that you're not able to or you're not capable so uh yeah patience um trust yourself and embrace the ups and downs. I've got photos of me playing football mostly because I like to tell everyone that I play football. <laughs> but <laughs> there's a photo of me in 1994 and then there's a photo of me last summer uh, with one of our lecturers, Tony. Hi, Tony. Um, in a Man United shirt because I've been a United fan since I was four years old. Uh, but I'm a much better footballer now than I was when I was four or six. or I was six in that photo, six. Um, and that's because well, I don't play very often anymore, but you know, practice, 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 and time. Um, with time, things get better. So, you know, if you're struggling in your second year or whatever, wherever you are watching this, um, just because you've had a disappointing year doesn't mean you should throw it all away. So just wait and look back and look at how far you've come. Um, 
I was watching another friend's video of his story, Dylan, and he mentioned that um, sometimes you have to stop and reflect and think about how far you've come. When I started my degree three, four years ago now, I hadn't done any maths for a very, very, very long time and I hadn't done much maths when I did do maths. And now I'm nearly at the end of a physics degree in four years. So sometimes I have to give myself credit for how much I've learned in that short period of time. Um, and I still love it. Um, the fourth thing, I think it's the fourth, I've lost count now, have fun. That's the thing I sometimes forget. Although the passion is always there and I might get burnt out like I did this year. Um, sometimes you forget to have fun and there's so many cool things that I've done in these four years, not just learning the, the physics. So that mug um, it has so much sentimental value to me. My brother told me that he broke it during lockdown when he went home to my mum's and he was lying and literally I was about to cry. Bugger. Thanks, Sam. Um, anyway, that mug was a gift from a primary school boyfriend. Hi, Jake. You're not watching this video, probably. Um, because I was an abs astronomy-obsessed kid and it's from the London Planetarium that doesn't exist anymore. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, Jake and I are not together anymore, but I still have the mug. It's been through the dishwasher several times, but it's, it's very personal to me. <laughs> Uh, but it reminds me of that little kid that thought they might want to be an astronomer um, and I got put off along the way because I was told maths and science were hard, ridiculous that someone telling me they were hard put me off but it's true. Um, so that mug reminds me to enjoy the ridiculous journey that I'm on at the moment um, and yeah I've done some really 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 cool things so Two years ago, I went down to the Royal Society with part of the medical physics group, uh, the MEG group, and Brian Cox was there and he stared into the middle distance and it was awesome, but it was just, it was incredible talking to the public. It was incredible being surrounded by the physicists who do a job that you want to do and that they're letting you there, letting you be there. Um, and then talking to the general public about the physics that you know, and I think it's probably the first time that I realized I'd actually learnt stuff you know, I might have been explaining it to 17 year olds or 70 year olds, but that was cool. I loved that a lot. And then off the back of that, I went to um, New Scientists Live and Cheltenham Science Festival with those dudes and had an absolute blast. And yeah, public engagement is something that I really, 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 really enjoy. And I want to sort of bring that into my physics career, whatever it looks like when I when I graduate and get a job. Um, so yeah, the most important thing, well, one of the most important things is to remember to have fun. Remember that people are important because the people that you surround yourself with get you through some of your hardest times and they have done for me. Um, shared values and being valued. That is, that is very much an open day thing, but sort of highlights why I chose Nottingham because the faculty sort of have an ethos and share my values and they make everyone feel valued from day one, which is great. Um, and yeah, I, I probably say this at the end of every roundup video for the year, but it is challenging and hard work. It's so challenging. It's the hardest thing I've ever done, but I've loved every second. And I've only got one more year to go. <laughs> um, yeah, so I will... <sighs> I'll talk a little bit now about, I'm going to fill in the gaps, I'm going to fill in the gaps. So you've got the Hannah at age six who's obsessed with football, that was my first love, then my second love was astronomy and then my third love was probably writing, I think. Um, but yeah, I opened a, opened a children's encyclopedia at about seven or eight years old. Um, I have this weird recollection that it was a rainy day and mum was like, just read one of your Christmas presents, God damn it. Um, opened it up and it started with the universe and I was hooked instantly and wanted to become an astronomer and didn't believe that you had to do maths and science to learn about the universe. I just wanted to read it in English. Um, but yeah, and then, so I got that mug 
which is that sort of signifier of that period of my life. And then got put off before I even left primary school. Well, got put off, not necessarily astronomy, obviously, but um, maths and science. I remember waiting for every lesson in science to turn to astronomy and it was just the solar system obviously the solar system is really cool but every year we just did the planets again I was like I know all this tell me something new I'm waiting to learn come on uh so science school was boring um a lot of science schools are boring and then went through primary school had a lovely time went to secondary school in South Africa we moved to South Africa when I was 11 years old Johannesburg did GCSEs got crap-ish results. I think I studied for one exam. I had no work ethic. I mean, that's not true. I worked, I did my homework, but I didn't put any in, any extra effort in. And the times I did put in extra effort, I did fairly well. And some, well, except, and sometimes I didn't. I don't know where this story is going. But looking at those re results, the point is, I remember studying for biology and that was probably one of my best subjects. I was getting 80% th consistently throughout the years. And then I got a D. It's like, why? what? <laughs> so yeah, exams are stupid. Uh, and GCSEs in South Africa, IGCSEs, were just one exam. There was no coursework, nothing like that, apart from for art. Anyway, did all right in English and art and stuff like that. So I thought, okay, fine, that's my career sorted. I will go into writing and creative stuff. And then knew I wanted to come back to England to do A-levels, came back to England, was looking at English and creative writing degrees. Um, and at age 16, my friend Sarah will laugh if she's watching this, at age 16 I got into politics <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just not sure if I'm ready to admit why <laughs> Gordon Brown was Prime Minister I think no Tony Blair was still Prime Minister anyway Gordon Brown was Chancellor anyway doesn't matter um, they were just the news you know these, these sound bites that mean nothing and they were just banging on and on and on about the 10p tax fiasco. I said, what the hell does that mean? Uh, so I decided to do research and find out what it meant. And then I was like, oh, okay, cool. P politics isn't as impenetrable as I thought it was. And I started listening to Radio 4, specifically the Today programme, reading The Guardian, blah, 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 blah. Got into politics and then got into history. And then, I mean, Radio 4 was probably to blame more than anything. Um, I just realised at 16 that I liked learning more than just sitting in the classroom and listening. Um, and I started my A-levels and I was already starting to think about maybe English and creative writing wasn't what I wanted to do. I actually wanted to keep learning other stuff. Um, got into history a lot and definitely thought about doing physics because I remember looking at undergraduate um, prospectors for Nottingham specifically and flicking to the sciences and going to, to physics and astronomy and I didn't have the grades, so again, I kind of put it aside. Um, also at A-level, I chose maths and physics at A-level, but it clashed with the timetable, so I didn't do them. So there were these little things that even I've forgotten about, because I forgot about choosing those subjects for A-level. Um, but I pulled out my A-level certificates from my mum's attic, and they were, they were there. Um, the timetable that I'd chosen was there as well. So it was always there at the back of my mind. I was still reading popular science books. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I changed my A-level subjects. I did an extra year. I initially started doing, I completely forgot. I initially started doing a BTEC in media moving images because I wanted to be a filmmaker, writer, whatever. Um, but anyway, that happened and I ended up studying Russian and Slavonic studies. Um, so, I mean, it seemed like an interesting degree and I'd never done it before, never learned anything about that region before and knew a little bit about Yugoslavia from the news when I was a kid and that was kind of enough to sort of hook me. Um, this video is already too long. Um, 
so I did that and I loved it and I graduated with a degree but in my first or second year it was probably when I joined Twitter so like 12 years ago um, I was reading Bill Bryson's A Short History of Nearly Everything and I initially thought it might be about history but it wasn't, it was about science and it blew my mind it was just one of these moments where I realised that I was studying the wrong thing and I'd been brought up you know, in a family, well, I think most people are brought up to think, you know, once you've started something, try and finish it. So I carried on with my degree and also I couldn't go. It seemed totally unreasonable and not feasible at all to go back and start again at that point. So I waited until I was 28. <laughs> um, anyway, graduated at 23, started foundation year at 28. So five years, what the did I do? Oh, I swore. <laughs> um, <laughs> I swear a lot I swear a lot and I never swear in these videos so sorry um, what the hell should I do or what the hell did I do in those five years um, I got a job and thought a lot about whether or not I should study physics um, and I just couldn't shake it, but I also couldn't find a way. By that point, doing a second degree was far too expensive. I won't go into the financial ins and outs in this video. I think I have in other videos before. Um, but let's just say, you know, some government policy changes meant that in 2016, I was able to start a degree in the UK instead of having to go abroad and haven't really looked back since. So the foundation year kind of caught me up to speed from zero maths to A-level maths, and from zero physics to A-level physics. Um, and we're now at the point where I talked about my first year and how I was disappointed in the grades. And I haven't had, I haven't had grades like I had in my January exams this year, but my final results this year are a mixed bag. I got a first in one module. I got some two ones in other modules. I got some 50s, high 50s in other modules. Um, I got a January 47, which sucked, but I loved the module. Um, but looking at those results, they're actually quite similar to my first year results. And yet I don't feel in any way disappointed this year. I, I started to burn out this year as well. So I think I just wanted to get through it. But also my confidence in my own abilities has strengthened. Um, and I'm not worried about not doing so well anymore. And I mean, well on paper. Um, because I've learned a lot. I know that I've learned so much in the last four years. And I am really enjoying the journey that I'm on. Um, I've got one more year left. And I am looking forward to finishing because it's exhausting. I love the subject, I love the people, I love learning, but there's only so much. I think my brain is just melting. <laughs> um, I am looking forward to getting over the line and going, okay, I've done all that stuff. That's me. I have a physics degree. Now what can I do to build on it? Um, and I'm actually looking at things like mathematical modeling or data science, not necessarily staying in physics or doing something that's a bit more interdisciplinary. Um, and I never would have thought, you know, five years ago, I didn't know where I was gonna end up. I did think a PhD, I still think a PhD, but I'm kind of just enjoying each year and seeing where it leads. And yeah, it's all very exciting. I'm really looking forward to not being as broke and I can hear a lot of you going, well, if you do a PhD, you're going to be as broke. But I disagree. Um, but we'll see. I will look at jobs. I will look at PhDs. Um, I'm taking most of the summer off. Uh, I have a little internship working from home because the pandemic sucks. Uh, for about a month, it might be a sort of public engagement, writing about physics more than doing physics, maybe a bit of programming here and there. Um, but I'm relishing and enjoying this break as much as possible ready to start the final final year um i don't think i have anything more to say um as always like if you have any questions let me know i have an email address on my youtube 
channel. This has been much, much more rambly than normal. I will have a look. Uh, I'll see what it looks like when I edit it and then I'll just put it out there. And if you like it, great. If you don't, bleh, sorry. So it's been a kind of hybrid of what I've learned in the last four years of doing this degree. My story, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, um, and my third year results this year. Um, I'm going to end it there and make the most of the sunshine and go and sunbathe for a bit. Bye.